So we'll do um, the next section today. As I sort of predicted, we won't get either we won't get to or we won't finish in the verses, but we should have time for this section. Um, so we're going to talk about matrices. And we've made the observation that vectors, I mean, you can think of vectors as a special kind of matrix. It's not necessarily very productive to think of it that way, because you wouldn't, you know, put a vector into reduced row echelon form. I mean, in general, the things you do are different. But you can think of them in those terms, and we've seen that we can add vectors together, and we can perform scalar multiplication with, um, with vectors, and the exact same prop things we can do for matrices. We can add matrices, assuming they're the same size, but that's a condition vectors have too. And we can multiply matrices by constants. And, um, with vectors, addition is done component-wise, and it's the same with matrices. So we'll add the first row, first column elements, add the first row, second column elements, Add the second row, first column elements. Add the second row, second column elements. And there is matrix addition. And similarly, when we multiplied a vector by a scalar, we multiplied every entry of the vector by a scalar. Same thing with matrices. We just take all of the entries in the matrice matrix and we multiply it by a scalar. Um, this addition and this scalar multiplication have the same properties that vector addition and scalar multiplication of vectors have. So I seem to have neglected to question. Is this supposed to be a 12? Next to 4. Oh, yes, you're right. Thank you for catching that. Six times two is twelve. So let's see, I appear to have neglected to write these properties in my notes, so we'll see if we can do them from a memory. A matrix addition is commutative. Matrix addition is associative. Scalar addition or multiplication, I mean to say. Distributes over matrix addition. Uh, scalar addition. Maybe I'd better not use beta. 
that looks a lot like a capital B. Similarly, Scalar Edition distributes in the natural way. <laughs> um, there's a zero matrix. The matrix whose entries are all zero. And adding the zero matrix doesn't do anything. A matrix plus the scalar product, negative one times that matrix, is zero. Um, so essentially saying that a matrix minus itself equals zero. Let's see. One times a matrix equals the matrix. Multiplication by one doesn't do anything. And scalar multiplication <laughs> can move around. We can have this kind of associativity property for scalar multiplication. And I believe I've done it. There were eight properties for vectors, as I recall the list, and except for the fact that I'm sure I have these in a different order, these are the exact same properties that vectors have. So that's important, um, maybe not uh, super surprising. Again, I said this with vectors. I mean, if you, I mean, yes, I reproduced the list because I've been teaching this class forever. I wouldn't think of this as a list that you commit to memory and then reproduce at will, I'd again try to get at the take-home message, which is that this addition and this multiplication act the way we're used to them acting. I mean, we're used to order not mattering when we add two, two numbers, and it still doesn't matter when we add two matrices. More, uh, convoluted. So here's something truly new. We didn't do this with vectors. We can sometimes multiply to matrices together. And I say sometimes because there are dimensional requirements. If A is an M by N matrix, then B has to be an N by something matrix. Those inner dimensions have to match. And this is hopefully familiar. The inner dimensions matching was a requirement when you multiply a matrix by a vector as well. And the result of such a multiplication, and again, this is just like it was for matrices times vectors, the inner dimensions matching 
that you do the multiplication, the outer dimensions give you the dimension of the product. So if we've got a A uh, two by three matrix, and we multiply it by a by a three by two matrix. We can do the multiplication because those dimensions match, and our result is going to be a two by two matrix. Two rows, two columns. And as far as what this product is, I guess that's the next thing on the docket. I say we can do this multiplication but how? So just like, just as with a matrix times a vector, the way we define a matrix times a matrix is probably not super intuitive. I mean, the obvious <laughs> way to define a matrix times a matrix is to, um, make them be the same size and do it just like addition. That idea has problems though, because vectors are a special kind of matrix, and we've already defined a matrix times a vector, and we didn't do it like that. So that would give us two different definitions of matrix multiplication, uh, which we could live with. X, I mean, the real issue is that defining matrix multiplication that way isn't useful. We don't run into applications where we want to multiply matrices component-wise, so why bother? The actual way we do this. I've said it before, and it will probably keep coming up throughout the class, that we often think of matrices as being basically vector storage units. So we can think of this matrix B as being a bunch of vectors sitting next to each other. And since we've already defined a matrix times a vector, we can state to this definition. A matrix times a matrix is obtained by multiplying the matrix by each of the columns of, of the right-hand matrix. Why this definition? Um, there's there's a, re a very concrete reason that a matrix times a matrix basically has to be defined this way. And it's to do with associativity. So what associate, I mean, you keep seeing this on lists of properties. We've seen that matrix addition is associative. We've seen that vector addition is associative.
but for multiplication, associativity is that property that I put on the board. You can move around parentheses. And associativity is a really fundamental property. I mean, I think when you first see it, it doesn't seem fundamental, but associativity is what lets us say, you know, three times five times seven, and have that be a number. If we didn't have associativity, then three times five times seven, and three times five times seven could be two different things. So it's a, it's a really fundamental property that lets us multiply more than two elements. In this case, that lets us multiply more than two matrices. And let's investigate associativity in the special case where one of our matrices is a vector. Remember that vectors are matrices. So this everything we're doing with matrix matrix multiplication ought to apply to matrix vector multiplication. Well, once again, we think of B as a vector storage unit, essentially. Let me warden that off a little more tightly. And V the vector is a list of numbers like that. And by the way, we defined a matrix times a vector. It's the scalar or the linear combination. <coughs> The first entry of the vector times the first column, V1, B1. The second entry of the vector times the second column. And so on down the line. Matrix multiplication distributes over vector addition. Does uh, I at some point Fortunately, just in the last step, I'm so used to using V's for vectors, but it's the B's that are vectors here. So now, um, because these V's are scalars, we can just move scalars around. We've commented on this several times already. This is A, B1, V1, and we can move parentheses around and we can add parentheses. We are, I always sort of think of it as an afterthought, but we're using this property. So, a, B2, V2, plus, plus, A, Bn, V1. 
fiel. Oh, uh, does this all seem right so far to everyone? So what we're going to do now, I'd probably better do it on uh, a new frame because we're running out of space. But this is a vector expression. It's a linear combination of vectors, and every linear combination of vectors is a matrix times a vector. Linear um, vector equations and matrix equations are formally identical. And in particular, it's going to be the matrix that has these columns times the vector v1, v2, up to vn. So a times b of e is equal to A B one, A B two, up to A B N times V, and by associativity, we, or rather, in order to have associativity, we also want A times B of E to equal this. And I mean, there might be multiple ways to ensure that happens. But I mean, the easiest way to make sure that a matrix times a vector is the same as a matrix times the same vector. I mean, the easiest way to guarantee this is if those are the same matrix. Then we definitely have associativity. So this sort of convoluted definition was designed, well, I mean, I can't make historical comments. I have no idea who first stated this definition or why, but a very desirable side effect of this definition is that matrix multiplication is associative. Matrix multiplication has <coughs> some bless you, has some but not all of the properties that you are used to multiplication having. It is associative. We In fact, it was arguably defined the way it was defined explicitly to make it associative. It does distribute over addition. I don't know if I explicitly ever explicitly said this, by the way, but for this entire course, when I use uppercase letters, those are representing matrices. That's a standard convention, uppercase for matrices, lowercase for scalars and vectors. So this is also a statement that multiplication distributes over addition. We'll have something to say about that in a moment. 
for now. Just uh, write it down. Scalers continue to behave nicely in the sense that we can move them around. We can move parentheses around. We can put the scalar between the matrices. The scalar can go anywhere. I mean, I haven't, it's not in the textbook for whatever reason, but it's true the scalar can go at the end as well. And then, so this is when I put it down, it's going to be complete shiverish because I haven't defined I, but I am about to on the next frame. So for now, we can just copy this. So, even before I define I, let me sort of try to unwrap this. When numbers, when, you're, when you have numbers, like real numbers, there's the multiplicative identity, which is an extremely multi-syllable way of saying the number one. One times any other number is that number. Multiplication by one doesn't change anything, and that's what makes one the multiplicative identity. So what I'm saying here is that we have matrix multiplication also has a multiplicative identity. There's a matrix that acts like one in the sense that multiplying the matrix by this identity, by this I matrix, doesn't change anything. And this identity matrix, I say the identity matrix, there are an infinite number of them. They're all square where they all have ones down the diagonal. They're all zero everywhere else. And again, I say the identity, but there's a two by two identity. There's a three by three identity. There's a four by four identity and so on. And actually, you have to be just a little careful. You see two um, in five that the identity times A equals A, and that A times the identity equals A, and those identity matrices might be different at, um, by which I mean, say that A is a, a two by three matrix. Then if we multiply by the identity, <coughs> by this three by three matrix, we don't change anything. It's the same as multiplying by one. It's likewise true that if we take one, two, three, one, four, seven, <coughs> and multiply it on the left 
by the identity, it won't change anything. But for this multiplication to be defined, the identity on the left can't be this 3 by 3 matrix. It has to be a 2 by 2 matrix. So, um, in general, we just always call the identity I. We call this identity I, we call this identity I, and it's up to you to use context to determine that one of these identities is the 3 by 3 identity, and the other identity is the 2 by 2. Identity. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could write something like I sub 3 by 3, but in practice, we basically never do that. So matrix multiplication has some properties that we expect multiplication to have. It's missing other properties, and the most fundamental property that you think multiplication should have, that matrix multiplication doesn't have, is commutativity. Matrix multiplication does not commute. In fact, unless A and B are square matrices of the same size, uh, both of those products won't even be defined. Like, we can take 1, 2, 1, 3, and multiply it. This is 2 by 2. Um, We can do this multiplication, the dimensions match, and we get a 2 by 3 matrix. If we flip them around, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 7, times 1, 2, one, three. Well, our inner dimensions don't match. So this isn't even defined. So in one sense, I mean, not having commutivity is obvious. If if only one of these products is even defined, of course they can't be equal. But, um, I mean, aside from freak matrices that you explicitly define to have some kind of commutivity, even if you can do both the products, And that will happen if you have square matrices of the same size. Both of these products are defined, but they're not equal. Um, and we're not at the point of doing this matrix multiplication quickly in our heads. So maybe I'll conscript the calculator. Oh. 
always just slightly too long pause while we wait for it to load. So A is now two by two, one, two, one, three. And B is two, three, four, seven. What am I doing? Get out of here. Uh, there is no special button for matrix multiplication. You can either use the regular multiplication or you can just put them next to each other. But A times B is 10, 17, 14, 24. B times A 5, 13, 11, 29. So both these products are defined, but, um, but they're not equal. Let's see. We cannot cancel matrix multiplication. I don't know that this is ever really going to come up in this class, but just for record, if AB equals AC, it does not mean that B was C. And we're going to kind of talk about this in the next section. Finally, there is no zero product. property. So we have a zero matrix, just like we have a zero vector. And we can multiply two matrices together and get the zero matrix. This is the only bit of notation I always find a little unfortunate. When I'm talking about the zero vector, I can put the vector line above it. Um, when I talk about the zero matrix, there isn't any kind of special notation I can use. You just have to recognize, well, if we're multiplying matrices together, um, the product is a matrix. So that must be the zero matrix, not the real number zero. But this does not mean that A equals zero or that B equals zero. In fact, it's possible to have two matrices multiplied together and equaling zero, where none of those matrices have a single zero and Tree. So that's matrix multiplication. Um, as with matrix vector multiplication, I mean, it's important to know the definition, right?
right? Like the fact that a matrix times a vector is a linear combination of the columns of the matrix. I hope you master that. Otherwise, the step where we went from here to there must have been complete gibberish. So it's important to understand this stuff. But in practice, if I want one, two, one, seven times three, negative one, what I'm actually going to do is say, okay, cover up the second row. One times three, three, two times negative one, negative two, three and negative two. are positive one. Did not mean to put that there. And then, okay, cover up the first row. One times three is three. Seven times negative one is negative seven. Three and negative seven added up are negative four. So, in practice, when we're finding these products by hand, we're probably not using that definition. And it's, it's the same thing when you're multiplying matrices. If you've got the two by three, <coughs> matrix that I just put on the board. Multiplied by the three times two matrix. So the result is a two by two matrix. Those outer entries give the dimension. And we, in practice, we tend to find these entries doing an algorithm very similar to our matrix vector algorithm. So for the first row, first column, we'll take the first row here and the first column here, and then we'll multiply them pairwise and add them up. One times one is one, zero times two is zero, negative two times one is negative two. So we've got a one, a zero, and a negative two, add them all up, and we get a negative one. So the first matrix is giving us rows, the second matrix columns. So for the first row, second column entry here, we'll use the first row of the first matrix, the second column of the second matrix. And we'll get one times zero is zero, zero times negative one is zero, Negative two times one is negative two. Add them up. Zero and zero and negative two is negative two. If we now want the second row first column, Again, the row comes from the first matrix, the column from the second matrix. And, I mean, I've been sort of assuming that this is clear, but let's go a little slower. We've got that row, one, two, one. We've got that column, one, Two, one, by a coincidence, the row and the column are the same. 
And what we're doing is we're multiplying these entries. So we get a one and a four and a one. And then we're adding those up. So for the second row, second column, again, I'll, I'll put this down, especially for the recording, which does not capture my gesturing towards the whiteboard and saying this row. We have um, this row, the second row of the first matrix, and we have a column, the second column of the second matrix. And what we're doing, essentially, is putting them next to each other, multiplying across, and then adding up. And assuming that your numbers are nice and the matrices are small, you're probably not bothering to write that down. You're probably doing it in your head. Um, I, I should say, though, I mean, if there's even one fraction or one decimal, then matrix matrix multiplication can get super ugly, super fast. I would not be shy about using your calculators. It's what we have them for. Any questions so far? And let me, we have what, 20 minutes left? We're not quite done with this section. Um, but we just have a few stray definitions in Canvas. The notes are labeled miscellany. Um, we, can take powers of a square matrices and only square matrices. And this comes from um, dimensional analysis. Um, like if we have a two by two matrix times a two by two matrix times a two by two matrix. And we just start doing this multiplication left to right. That product is a two by two matrix. We multiply it by this third two by two matrix. The result is a two by two matrix. As opposed to, you know, a two by three matrix, where if you try to square it, to multiply it by itself, you would not be able to because of that mismatch in dimensions. Um, we'll see a very interesting, I mean, I think it's interesting, a hopefully very interesting application of matrix powers to probability later in the course. And this is practically, 
what we'd call an informational item if this were like a faculty senate meeting because we're not really going to do much of anything with this but you probably should know what a transpose is and I mean it, it might be easier to just show this via example. The transpose of a matrix is indicated by putting a capital T as if it were a power to the upper right. And what the transpose does is it flips the rows and the columns. That first column, sorry, that first row becomes the first column of the transpose. That second row becomes the second column of the transpose. And it's a shame that, uh, that transposes don't get more play in this class. The, uh, the simple fact is that the most important application to transposes is um, symmetric matrices, matrices that equal their own transpose. They show up in very important applications. We never have time to cover them. And that's just either you make it a sequence and you have linear algebra A and linear algebra B, or you just kind of accept that there's some interesting material that you're not going to cover. But just for the record, for the minutes, that's what a transpose is. And that brings us to the end of this section. With 20 minutes left, I'll introduce the next section.